Hi everyone, welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will see how to create morph targets in Blender and how to use them in Unreal Engine 5. This can be especially useful for farming, um, building games, or games where there is an evolution from an initial state to a final state. Morph targets are useful because they allow us to access any moment of the transformation from the initial to the final state through code. In this case, blueprints. The transformation is not only of a scale. Here you can see how the petals of the flowers open little by little, how the leaves grow, etc. In the description, I leave a link where you can download all the files. The first step is to create the morph targets in Blender. In Blender, they are called shape keys. I have created the final state, since I think it's easier. And from there, I made a copy to modify the vertices to create the initial state. Here, there is no creative limitation. You can make it as complex as you want. The only limitation is technical, and is that the initial state and the final state must have the same number of vertices. I'm using a flower as an example, but you can apply the same principles to trees, animals, buildings, and anything you can think of. Once you're happy with the two states, you have to create the shape keys. For that, we select the initial state, and in the Object Data Properties tab, look for Shape Keys and click on the plus button. This will add the first shape key called basis. Then select the final state, the initial state, and again in the shape keys, click on the options arrow and select join as shapes, which adds a new shape key based on the final state. You can rename the shape keys. It's important to remember the name because we will need it in UE5. You can check the shape keys by sliding the value of the final state from zero to one. The last step is to convert our mesh into a skeletal mesh, since UE5 only imports shape keys if it's a skeletal mesh. To do this, we simply add a bone, and with Ctrl P, we parent the model to the bone. The bone will not be used in UE5, so we don't really care about accuracy or skinning the flowers. At this point, we are ready to export the object to UE5. Select the object and the armature and export it as FBX. In the options, I always select selected objects and the types mesh and armature. So I make sure I don't accidentally import other objects. In geometry, I change the smoothing to face and in armature, I select only the form bones and unselect add leaf bones. Once in UE5, I import the model. We must be careful with the options. The first thing is to leave empty the skeleton slot. UE5 will create the skeleton for us. Then it's very important that we check the import morph targets option. If we create the materials in UE5 when importing, it's possible that we get a warning saying that the material must support morph targets. Later, I will show you where this option is in case you have any issues with the rendering. A good way to make sure that everything is imported correctly is to open the skeletal mesh. And we will see in the morph target preview window how appears our morph target. If you do not see this window, you can open it from window morph target preview. Now we will see how we can use the morph targets in blueprints. Depending on how you want to use the morph targets, there are many ways to do it, but I will show you the main nodes so you can adjust it to your convenience. In this case, I have created a blueprint and added the skeletal mesh. How you organize your blueprint is up to you and your project. In this example, I show you how to animate the morph targets between states, but also how each flower has a different duration, so it looks a little more organic. On the other hand, I made the flowers grow 20% each time we press the G key, but you can make it based on time, etc. I'll explain how I did flower 1, since the other two are exactly the same. When I press G, I make a sequence for the three flowers. I check if the growing variable of flower 1 is less than 1. Morph targets go from 0 to 1. If it's less than 1, it can still grow, so we go to the timeline. This timeline has an interpolated float from 0 to 1 in 1 second. What they do is multiply the result of the interpolation by 0.2. This 0.2 is the 20% growth for each time we press the G key. We add the result to the original growing variable and pass the value to the set morph target node. This is the most important node. You can simply use this node if you don't want to animate between states. In the target slot goes the skeletal mesh to which we want to modify its morph target. In morph target name goes the name we used in Blender for our shape key. And the value can be anything. 
you should make sure you clamp it from 0 to 1 to avoid unexpected results. Finally, I save the new value in the variable of growing one. For the rest of the flowers, I do exactly the same. The difference is the timelines have shorter interpolations. You can use these for many things, from facial animations to different types of bodies in character customization, the evolution of a species, etc. The only limitation is your imagination. There are a couple of problems you may encounter. If you have problems with the rendering, make sure that the material has morph target support. To do this, open the material and in the usage section, check that used with morph targets is active. If your mesh flickers, you have to go to the blueprint and select the skeletal mesh and then unselect the per bone motion blur. With these two changes, you shouldn't have any more problems. I hope that helps. And that was all. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave your comments below. And thank you very much for watching. Have a great week.